Hello there. Uh, welcome back to cost and management accounting at six. In this video, we want to look at question five of the question paper of no, of June 2024. Uh, this is the question paper that we want to look at, and we are going to look at question five, part of question five on that uh, question paper. So uh, the question that is the following income statement was prepared by the Indian experienced bookkeeper of K and K Limited, and then uh, we are given this um income statement, and then uh, uh believe that we are just going to start from uh from five point two uh going are going down. So um, it's uh, five point two says calculate the business marginal income. Calculate the business marginal income. But what you know, but what you should know is that marginal income is calculated by saying our our sales and then subtract all the variable costs and then you are going to get your your marginal income. So basically, you can say uh, marginal income is equals to sales minus a variable cost. So we don't take into account uh, the issue of fixed cost. Remember. In, in absorption, we take all, all, all costs that is a fixed and variable, but in marginal, we are only concerned about variable cost. So um, if you go to our other section, uh, if you go to our other section, we'll see that uh, we have a given, uh, we have got this, uh, uh, this statement that we want to prepare. So we are just going to uh, do a search and then we prepare that. But you know that uh in that uh in that statement we are going to start obviously with the figure four for ourselves. So let's just see. So here we are saying calculation. Of marginal income. So this is what we have. So we are saying uh, the figure that we are going to start with there is sales. And here we are looking at 5.2. So um, for our sales, uh, we are going to go to the uh, question and see what figure for sales do we have. You see that our sales figure is here, 4.5 million. So we're just going to pick that figure. So we are seeing uh, 4 point. So this is what we have. Then I believe that now uh, we are now saying less. Total variable cost. We're just going to list all the variable costs that we have in the question beneath that. And then uh beneath that now we can go down to check how which variable cost we have. Uh then uh we can remember we have uh we have a direct a direct labor, direct material, a direct labor. It's a variable cost. We have it here, 480. We have got also direct material, 550. And then um, we also have variable uh, variable selling and administration costs, 190,000. So these are the uh, three that we have. Uh, let's check if we've got another one. Uh, we also have variable manufacturing overheads, 220,000. So we are just going to uh, pick them. Uh, for direct material, we've got 550,000. For direct, direct labor, we've got 480,000. For vari variable manufacturing over, we've got 220,000. And then for variable selling and administration costs, we've got 190,000. So we are just picking those variable costs and then I list them up beneath here. So we are just saying, uh, firstly, we have direct labor. And for direct labor, the figure that we have uh, is uh, 480,000. And then we've got direct material. For direct material, we've got 550,000. And then uh, we have variable manufacturing overheads. Uh, Variable manufacturing over is uh, the figure that we have is 220. And lastly, we have got variable selling in administration costs. And then uh, the figure that we have is 190. So we can as well try to add them. 
So that you get the total of variable costs. 190,000 plus 220,000 plus 750,000 plus 480,000. Total should come here is 1 million 140,000. Uh, and then we are saying less, so we are subtracting. So we are saying 4 million 500,000 plus 1 million, sorry, 4 million 4, 4 million 500,000 minus 1 million 440,000. Then we get your, uh, your answer there. So let's just try to work it as such. So if you calculate it there, the figure that you are going to get there is going to be your marginal income. So uh, the answer that we have there is going to be three million and sixty thousand. So this is our marginal income. So let's take note of that. So uh, we can move on to the next question and try to see what we have. So on the next question now is 5.3. Say calculate the number of units. Calculate uh, the number of units that K and K limited by sale to break even. So the, this is now 5.3. So we are now on 5.3. On number of units which, which, which are needed to, to be sold so that uh, they can break even. So uh, let's try to see uh, break even quantity. Is the uh is what we want to calculate break even uh break even break even quantity so on break even quantity remember on break even point we are saying a company is, is is making neither a profit nor a loss so uh, the profit is zero that's what we are saying so uh the quantity that should be uh be there at that point is 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 what quantity that's the question. So the formula that we have to calculate the given quantity is equal to total fixed cost. Uh, total fixed cost over uh, your marginal income per unit. Your marginal income per unit. So uh, total fixed cost, uh, we can go to the question and try to see what uh, figure for total fixed cost we have. Fixed cost, we've got this one, uh, fixed manufacturing overheads, and we've got fixed uh, administration cost. So what are we saying? We are saying 255,000 plus 187,000. That's our fixed cost. So we can just come here and summarize that. We are saying in our numerator, we are adding 255,000. And then we add 187,000. Then for our denominator, we are saying marginal income per unit. So the income that we got, remember, for marginal income, we got it there, is 3,060,000. 3,060,000 is here. And then we want it per unit. Uh, we, then we find out how many units do we have in the question. Units are mentioned here is 90,000 units. So we divide by 90,000 so that we get uh, marginal income per, per unit. So in our denominator, we are saying uh, 3,060,000. We divide by uh, by ninety thousand to get marginal uh, uh, marginal income per unit. So what we are saying now is, if we add two hundred fifty five thousand plus one hundred eighty seven thousand, we are going to get four hundred forty two thousand. And then uh, we are going to divide. If we divide three million sixty thousand divided by ninety thousand, we are going to get your thirty four. So we divide the such, and then uh, we are going to get thirty thousand. Uh, 13,000 units. So these are the units are to break even. This is the quantity of units that are needed uh, for uh, for K and Kia to break even. They must sell that quantity so that they can break even. So we go to 5.4, calculate the break even value using the formula fixed cost over marginal income ratio. Fixed cost over marginal income ratio, 5.4. Uh, 5.4, they are saying fixed cost over marginal income ratio. Fixed cost, we know that we, we now have the figure for fixed cost uh, that, we, that we have calculated uh, just above. The figure for fixed cost that we calculated is 442,000. So uh, you come here, we have 442,000. Divided by marginal income ratio. Remember, marginal income ratio, we are saying 
uh, we are seeing the marginal income over the sales figure. Remember, the marginal income is this one, which is 360,000. And then we divide it by, by the sales figure, which is uh, our sales figure is 4,500,000. That's, that's how we, we get at the marginal income ratio. So we are saying, in our denominator, we are saying 3,060,000 divided by 4,500,000. And then we multiply the answer that you are going to get there. We multiply, we multiply it by hundred. Then we get it. So we are going to express the marginal income ratio as a percentage. So we do that. Uh, you are going to see that we are going to remain with one hundred forty-two thousand divided by uh, sixty-eight percent. And we know that sixty percent, sixty-eight percent is the decimal is zero point six eight. So we just divide by zero point six eight, and then you see uh, what you get there. So uh, we are saying, uh, if you say 442,000 divided by 0 0.68, you are going to get your 650,000 rands. So this is what we have on 5.4, which is the uh, the, the uh, break-even value using the formula fixed cost of a marginal income ratio. Right, uh, last one, prove that at the break-even quantity you, you calculated in B above that K and K limited does, does break-even. So we want to prove that uh, we can break-even using that quantity. So uh, what are we going to do? We are just going to make sure that we, we calculate the profit and the profit should be zero. As, as we know that profit at break-even point uh, should be a zero. So what are we saying? We can just maybe try to uh, come up with a uh, with, with sort of a a calculation that will lead us to that. So um, obviously we are we are saying sales over minus minus uh total cost. And the other that we are supposed to get there should be zero. So for sales, we know that it's for uh for sales uh we have ten we have thirteen thousand units at break even. Let's just uh just recheck. Uh, let's just recheck. We we found our break even units is thirteen thousand here. So this is the figure that you are going to use. And then if you go to the question, we know that at the selling price is 50, 50 per unit, fifty rands per unit. So we are, for the, to get the sales at thirteen thousand units, we are going to say thirteen thousand times fifty. So here we are saying uh, thirteen thousand times fifty that you get the sales using um, thirteen thousand units. So if you calculate there, you are going to get uh, 650. And then uh, we now subject total cost now. So we say let's total cost and we find out what for profit are we getting there. So we are saying the profit that we should get should be zero so that you can prove uh, that it's a, it, that's a big even quantity. So uh, for total cost, we have fixed cost. And fixed cost do not change with the level, with the level of production. We know that. What changes the level of production is uh, variable cost. So here we have got 13,000 units is the same as we had uh, 90,000 units. We have the same fixed cost, which are which are 442,000. So fixed cost uh, does not change. So you're just going to take as it is 442,000. But then for our variable, uh, for our variable, we are going to we are going to calculate the uh, total variable cost and then we calculate the variable cost per unit. Uh, we calculate the variable cost uh, per unit. Uh, let's just see. Uh, variable cost per unit. Right. These are the total variable cost that we calculated in the 5.2. There were the calculation of marginal income. These are the total variable cost. Total variable cost. 1,440,000. Then uh, to find the, the Marginal cost, uh, the, mean the variable cost per unit. Now we are saying total variable cost over total number of units. We have got 1,440,000 is the total variable cost. And number of units, uh, we have it uh, in the question, it's 90,000. So we divide by 90,000 to get variable cost per unit. Uh, when we divide there, uh, let's try to see what do we get. Okay, we are saying 1,440,000. And we divide by 90,000. 
they're going to get 16. So 16 is uh, the uh, the variable cost per unit. So we are going to use it here in our calculation when we are trying to prove. So if you come here now, we are now saying um, the variable cost uh, variable variable cost uh, variable cost. Let's try to see. Variable costs are in brackets. We are saying uh, with number of units that we are dealing with 13,000. So we're saying 13,000. Remember, variable cost changes the level of, of production. And then you multiply by the uh, unit cost of the variable cost, which is 16. And let's, let's try to see what you get. Uh, 13,000 times uh, 16. You're going to get 208,000. So here we have 208,000. And then we add 208,000 plus um, 442 uh, there to get the total cost. Uh, let's try to add. We are getting 650. 650,000, and we are saying less, so we are subtracting. So we are seeing that uh, if you now say uh, sales minus total cost, you are going to say 650,000 uh, minus. 650,000, then uh, your profit is going to be zero. So this is going to be your net profit, zero. So we have proven that uh, the 13,000 units uh, quantity represents the break-even quantity uh, realistically. So this is what we have, guys, in terms of this video. Thank you for listening. Those who haven't subscribed, please subscribe and see we are still coming with more videos. As for this video, I'm sending out, we meet again.